For over a decade now, investors and fund managers alike have been begging the US government to approve a Bitcoin ETF. And so far, every single one of these applications has been denied. But as of 2023, it seems as if both the SEC and Wall Street have had their attitudes change towards Bitcoin. With big money in Wall Street finally getting in on the game of crypto and Bitcoin with exchanges and new ETF filings. With the idea being that once they got their money into Bitcoin, then finally the SEC would approve a Bitcoin ETF. And then once this ETF was finally greenlit by the SEC, that would open the floodgates to trillions of dollars held in retirement accounts that as of yet have no access to investing in Bitcoin. Once the ETF is approved and all that money now has access to Bitcoin, it would send the price of Bitcoin higher if even a fraction of that money gets allocated to Bitcoin. And Wall Street getting to accumulate Bitcoin at much lower prices before this approval would mean they essentially get to front run that decision and take advantage of the massive price gains. And now something has happened that many people think is the final move. Finally forcing the SEC's hand to approving a Bitcoin ETF. ETF because a recent court ruling ruled in favor of Grayscale in their lawsuit against the SEC. The SEC had recently denied the company's application to convert their fund into an ETF. And this ruling caused the price of Bitcoin to surge. So the question is, is this the final move? Will the SEC finally be forced to allow ETFs that invest directly in Bitcoin? In my opinion, probably not, but it is very likely find out why. If you don't know who I am, my name is Joe Brown. I run Heresy Financial University, where I teach active investors how to get higher returns while limiting their risk. If you're interested in learning more, link is in the description below. First, we have to go back to the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. The symbol for this fund is GBTC. GBTC is a fund that allows you to indirectly invest in Bitcoin. You buy shares of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, and then they use that money to buy Bitcoin. There are, however, a few problems with this approach. Number one, because it's a trust, it has an annual fee of 2%. And again, because it's a trust, sometimes the share price trades at an extreme premium to its net asset value, and at other times it trades at an extreme discount to its net asset value. This means that even if the price of Bitcoin doesn't change, you could still see the price of the shares of GBTC change by quite a large amount. This presents issues for liquidity. If you need to sell at a time, you may even see Bitcoin go up, but you have to sell your shares at a loss. A Bitcoin ETF would solve these problems. Now, investing in Bitcoin through GBTC is not the only way that investors have access to Bitcoin through a regular brokerage account, investors can also use Bitcoin futures ETFs. Instead of a Bitcoin futures ETF investing its money directly in Bitcoin, the money is used to trade Bitcoin futures contracts. This is done in an effort to mimic the price of Bitcoin. Downsides are that there are costs involved in trading futures, which means the returns will probably never be the exact same as Bitcoin. But first, a word from today's sponsor, I Trust Capital. Investors today face all sorts sorts of new and unique risks. Invest in stocks and risk a stock market crash. Invest in bonds and watch the value of those bonds drop as interest rates rise. Keep your money in cash and watch inflation eat away your purchasing power. Invest in crypto and watch frauds like Sam Bankman Freed steal all your money. This has many investors looking to alternative stores of value like gold and Bitcoin. The problem with this is that most investors are not able to access gold and Bitcoin. This is because most people have most of their assets tied up in their retirement accounts. And most retirement accounts do not allow you access to things like gold or silver or Bitcoin. This is where iTrust Capital comes in. iTrust Capital allows you to open up a new retirement account or even transfer an existing retirement account. Then you can purchase alternative stores of value with your retirement like gold, silver, and Bitcoin. In days like this where fraudulent platforms like FTX are collapsing and traditional banks like Silicon Valley Bank are failing from bank runs, I trust capital is still going strong because they do things the right way. You own your assets there. Your assets are always held off balance sheet and your account 
accounts are never commingled with theirs. They partner with industry leaders like Kitco for their precious metals. And they're straightforward about how they keep your assets separate and safe. And if you use my link in the description below, you will get $100 worth of Bitcoin just for signing up. Now, the way these Bitcoin futures ETFs work is important and you'll need to remember this for later in the conversation. But first, what has been happening during 2023 that marks a big shift in big money's view and opinions, their shift Wall Street's big move towards Bitcoin. Well, first we have EDX crypto exchange going live. This is a crypto exchange backed by financial giants like Charles Schwab, Fidelity and Citadel Securities. Now by itself, this news may not be odd, but it came within days of the SEC charging Coinbase for operating an unregistered securities exchange, which just looks conspicuous. We don't want you doing it, but we will do it ourselves. On top of that, BlackRock filed for their own Bitcoin ETF application. Now again, by itself, this would be not odd at all, but BlackRock has over 500 ETFs that it has created, and it has only ever had one of those applications denied. And the fact that every single application for a Bitcoin ETF has been rejected for years, it's super odd to me that BlackRock out of nowhere would decide to throw its hat in the ring if it knew that it would also get rejected. So over the course of 2023, a few things have shifted that have made it look like Wall Street has changed its tune and it knew it had its ear to the ground and some big firms knew that the decision would be changing soon. Soon. So they were getting their ducks in order, and more importantly, they were getting their wallets in order before the decision came out. Now, it's worth noting that there is one other move that happened right around this same time, and that is the fact that X, former Twitter, just acquired a license to integrate crypto payments. Elon Musk has talked about turning X into the American version of WeChat, basically a social platform where you can do literally anything, including sending payments payments, trading stocks, really wanting to turn it into his original vision for X back in the day that ended up turning into PayPal. And this is not really far-fetched considering you can trade stocks with the Cash App, which is owned by Block, formerly Square. This is the company owned and run by Jack Dorsey, the man who created Twitter, a man who himself is a Bitcoin maximalist. Okay, so what about this recent court ruling with the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust? Essentially, for a long time, Grayscale has been trying to convert its trust into an ETF. And every time the SEC has re rejected this request. But the reason why is very important here. The SEC's justification for denying this ETF was that it was not designed to prevent fraudulent and manipulative acts and practices. Now, the reason for this is because ETFs are used and available in a much broader context than things like trusts. And so they have a lot more rules. Basically, the SEC says an ETF has a higher bar, a higher threshold to cross to be considered generally safe for most investors money. And so far, it has said that a Bitcoin ETF does not pass this test. But Grayscale sued the SEC for the rejection on this basis because a Bitcoin futures ETF already exists. Grayscale's position was that its own proposed Bitcoin ETF was materially similar to the Bitcoin futures exchange traded funds that were already approved by the SEC. Basically, Grayscale is saying here, look, there's not that much difference between the Bitcoin futures ETF and the Bitcoin ETF that we want to have, at least to the end consumer. Because the Bitcoin futures ETF, while it doesn't own Bitcoin itself, it still trades futures on Bitcoin. And so if that is designed to prevent fraudulent and manipulative acts and practices, then by the way, guys, I'm doing a silver giveaway, hundreds of dollars worth of silver for the silver symposium in Vegas from September 29th through October 1st. First place prize is getting this 10 ounce silver 
around. It's an Australian kookaburra, beautiful 10 ounce piece here. Second place gets this 10 ounce bar, not as pretty, but it's still 10 ounces of silver. So hundreds of dollars here. Third place prize gets this one ounce silver round. It's plated with gold and it has this nice little Bitcoin design stamped into it. So pretty cool. So what do you have to do to get the prizes? Number one, you have to sign up for the event with the ticket link in the description below. Number two, you have to meet me in person. The first person who signed up with my link, who meets me there in Vegas, gets this first place prize. Second person to meet me gets the second place prize. Third person there to meet me gets the third place prize. So get your tickets in the link below. Just a couple of weeks left. Can't wait to see you there and give away these, uh, these silver prizes. Certainly owning Bitcoin itself falls into that category as well. And the court ruled that they agreed with Grayscale. They said the commission failed to adequately explain why it approved the listing of two Bitcoin futures exchange traded products, but not Grayscale's proposed Bitcoin exchange traded product. In the absence of a coherent explanation, this unlike regulatory treatment of like products is unlawful. The court basically ruling that you cannot arbitrarily make a distinction saying you're approved, but you're not approved if they're doing something that is materially the same. Now, there are a few potential outcomes from this ruling. Number one, the SEC will probably appeal the court's ruling here. And the latest they said is that they are reviewing the court's decision to determine the next steps. Another potential outcome here is that the SEC has to go back and now those Bitcoin futures ETFs would no longer be allowed based on this consistent ruling that those futures ETFs would be shut down. And despite some people saying this is almost certainly not going to happen, this really is a possibility. A third potential outcome of this is that the SEC accepts Grayscale's application to convert into an ETF and subsequently approves all other Bitcoin ETF filings. This is also possible, but in my opinion right now, it's still not the most likely. The final potential outcome here, and in my opinion, the most likely is that the SEC comes up with one more new way to reject these Bitcoin ETF applications that has nothing to do with their previous reasoning that the court ruled inadequate. Upon doing so, the price of Bitcoin will most likely erase the gains that it made from this ruling by the court originally. This bearish price action could cause it to take out its support level and fall very quickly in a sell-off. That won't be the end of the story because big money will take that last opportunity to buy Bitcoin at lower prices, soak up all that selling, and then just wait patiently. BlackRock will get what BlackRock wants. They'll be the first one approved and then everybody else on the list will finally get approved after. The allowance of a spot Bitcoin ETF is looking inevitable, but it does not yet look imminent, at least to me. I expect that there's probably still more time to buy at these depressed price levels. But once this thing gets approved and once it's go time, this price is going to go up and quickly. You definitely want to get in before this happens, not wait until after it happens. For years now, I've recommended a 5% allocation to Bitcoin. And at current prices, I still like that allocation. If you're interested in how I fit that allocation into my entire portfolio, along with hedging and other advanced investing techniques, consider joining Heresy Financial University, linked in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.